Very bold. I remember, did you reply to my message? I did. Oh, wait. Are you talking to me? Or... Uh, has both in one pick. Yes. Nice. Okay. It's not oh, that's professional. Good. One is bigger than the other, but it kind of works. It's fine because that's actually... Um, because people will be watching mostly on their computer screens, so it should be bigger. Yeah, that's true. But we could do a little test now. Right, it looks like it. We are I look now. like four minutes past ten already, right? Yes. Uh, who is doing Jai Wow, oh, yeah, you should start your Jai Ramana, Ramananda, Ramananda. That's such a beautiful uh, historic Jai Dwani. Ramananda. You can learn the 12 or from you still. Oh. Sorry. Shri Shri Guru Gauranga Gandharvika Giridhari Shri Shri Radha Vinod Bihari Ji Ki Jai Shri Shri Radha Damodar Jo Ki Jai Jam Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Paribraja Kachar Jashpotra Shata Shri Shri Mar Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Ji Ki Jai Nitrila Prabhishnu Vishnu Pad, Ashtotra Shatta Shishimar, Bhakti Vedanta, Trivikram Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Nitrila Prabhishnu Vishnu Pad, Ashtotra Shatta Shishimar, Bhakti Vedanta, Vaman Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Nitrila Prabhishnu Vishnu Pad, Ashtotra Shatta Shishimar, Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Maharaj, Shila Prabhu Pad Ki Jai, Acharya Keshri Param Gurudev Nitrila Prabhishnu Vishnu Pad, Ashtotra Shatta Shishimar, Bhakti Pragyana Keshav Goswami Maharaj Ki Jai, Jagat Guru Nitrila Pravishna Vishnu Pad, Ashtotra Shatta Shri Shimar, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Thakur Shila Prabhu Pad Ki Jai, Mahabhag Vachila Gauru Kishorda Asvabhaji Maharaj Ki Jai, Saptam Goswami Sachidananda Shila Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai, Vaishnava Sarva Bhavma Shila Jagannada Asvabhaji Maharaj Ki Jai, Shri Gauri Viranta Achari Shila Balade Vidya Bhushan Prabhu Ki Jai, Shri Gauri Rasa Achari Shila Vishwana Chakravarti Thakur Ki Jai, Shila Narutam Shinivashama Ananda Prabhutrai Ki Jai, Shri Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai, व्यास भिन्न श्री वृंदावन दास ठाकुर की जय श्री रूप सनातन भट रघुनाथ श्री जीव गोपाल भट अस्कु स्वामी की जय श्री भूगर्भ गोस्वामी की जय श्री स्वरूप दामोदर गोस्वामी राय राम आनंद श्री की महिति माधवी देवी गौर पार्षद वृंद की जय नामाचार्य श्री हरिदास ठाकुर की जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्री शिवासादि गौर ಮಹಾಪುರುಷಿ ಕುಲ ದೇವಿ ಭಗವತಿ ಪೂರ್ಣಮಾಶಿ ದೇವಿ ಯೋಗ ಮಾಯ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೋಪೇಶ್ವರ ಮಹಾದೇವ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಲಲಿತಾ ಶಾಖಾ ಆದಿ ಸಖಿ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಅನಂಗ ಮಂಜರಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀ ರೂಪ ಮಂಜರಿ ಆದಿ ಮಹಾ ಸುದರ್ಶನ್ ಚಕ್ರ ಜಿ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಪುರುಷೋತ್ತಮ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ ಪುರಿ ಧಾಮ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವಿಘ್ನ ವಿನಾಶನ ಕಾರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ನರಸಿಂಹ ಭಗವಾನ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಭಕ್ತ ಪ್ರಭರ प्रहलाद महाराज की जय चारो धाम चारो आचार्य चारी संप्रदाय की जय केशव जी गौड़ी माची रूप सनातन गौड़ी माची गोपीनाथ भवन की जय श्री गिरिधारी गौड़ी मत की जय श्री श्री केशव जी गौड़ी मत कोलती धाम एवं शिल गुरुदेव समाधि मंदिर की जय जय श्री दामोदर गौड़ी मत की जय श्री रमन बिहारी गौड़ी मत की जय श्री राधा माधव गौड़ी मत की जय श्री गौरवानी गौड़ी मत की जय श्री संगम की जय श्री गंगा माता गौरी मत की जय श्री भगवान शाह कलयुग पावन त्रिभुवन मंगल कारी गोल के प्रेम धन हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जय जुगल नाम हरि कृष्ण महामंत्र की जय मृदंग करताल की जय आनंद कोति वैष्णव वृंद की जय चक मै ऑडियो सेटिंग ಶಿಲ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಕಮಲ್ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶಿಲ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಸ್ವರೂಪ ದಾಮೋದರ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಕಿ ಜಯ ಶಿಲ ಗೌರ್ ಗೋವಿಂ
श्री भक्ति विज्ञान भारती गोस्वामी महाराज की जय श्री भक्ति वल्लभ तीर्थ गोस्वामी महाराज की जय इट से माई इंटरनेट इज अनस्टेबल लेट मी ओपन द डोर सो माई राउटर गेट्स श्री भक्ति कमल गोविंद महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति स्वरूप दामोदर महाराज की जाए श्री गौर गोविंद गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति विज्ञान भारती गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति वल्लभ तीर्थ गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति कुमुद संत गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति वैभव पुरी गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति जीवन जनार्दन गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति दैत माधव गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति रक्षक श्रीधर गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति श्रीरूप सिद्धांति गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए श्री भक्ति प्रमोद पुरी गोस्वामी महाराज की जाए स्वपरिकार जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद की जाए आनंद कोति वैष्णव वृंद की जय समागत भक्त वृंद की जय मिताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरि हरि वो हाउ इज दैट विद साउंड तरुण या इट्स जस्ट आई डोंट नो इट्स गॉट द रेड बार्स बाय योर नेम व्हिच इज नॉट एन ऑस्पिशियस सिंबल फॉर समवन फॉर कीर्तन अम I don't know if you want to do it with your with your internet with your video off or something I'm not sure it might just be better Yeah let's try that I'm happy to not show my face cuz uh, it's a shame but if the internet's not coming through good then what can we do But I did say my internet is unstable so it's probably me Yeah, I think so. Shall I start reading a translation? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. What's the page number? Um, so it's in Prarthana. It's uh, it's not in the normal songbook. It's in the Prarthana book, song eleven, which okay. is page forty-seven. If you have. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Prabhu. As Ra- yeah. As Radha and Krishna relax in a solitary place on Govardhan Hill, I will accompany Lalita and Vishakha there to serve their beautiful lotus feet, which offer the benediction of divine bliss. When will I be able to take camphor and betel nuts from a golden box and offer it in their lotus mouths? Oh, when will I be able to place jeweled ankle bells on their lotus feet? One auspicious day I will apply sandalwood paste in a golden bowl and apply it on their limbs. With my guru who is a sakhi on my left side, I will take the chamar and fan the threefold bending form of my lord. I will gaze longingly at their lotus eyes and become overwhelmed with shivering due to ecstasy. And I will reach out to touch their lotus feet. Narottam Das who is the servant of Lord Chaitanya's servants has no other desire than this. गोवर्धन गिरिवर केवल निर्जन स्थल राय कानु करी पेशयाने गोवर्धन गिरिवन स्थल राय कानु करी पेशयाने ललिता विशाखा संगे सेवन करी बरंगे सुखमय रातुल चरणे गोवर्धन गिरिवर केवल निर्जन स्थल राय कानु करी पेशयाने नक संपूट करी करपुर तांबुल भरी योगाई बदन कमाले मनी माय किंकिनी रत्नानुपुरयानी पराई बचरन जुगाले गोवर्धन गिरिवर 
केवल निर्जन स्थल राय कानो करी बेशय ने कनक कतोर पूरी सुगंध चंदन भरी दोहाकार श्री अंग दाली व गुरु रूप सखी बामे त्रिभंग भंगी माथा में श्याम रे रता शरी गोवर्धन गिरी वर केवल निर्जन स्थल आय कानो करी बेशय ने दोहार कमल आखी फूलक हो देखी दुह पद पर शिव करे चैतन्य दासर दास मने मात्र अभिलाष नरोतम दास सदासपुरे गोवर्धन गिरीवर केवल निर्जन स्थल शय ने जय गिरीराज जय गोवर्धन गिरीराज जय गोवर्धन जय गिरीराज जय गोवर्धन गिरीराज जय गोवर्धन जय गुरुदेव जय गुरुदेव श्रीला नारायण गोस्वामी जय गुरुदेव जय प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद प्रभुपाद जय प्रभुपाद हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल निताय गौर हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल हरि बोल जय श्री गिरिराज गोवर्धन महाराज की जय Hey, Bob. Thank you, Prabhu, for that beautiful kirtan. Um, sorry, we couldn't get to see your face as you sang, but I think it came through quite well. So I think we had that trade off. So, hey, Bob. So before I begin, I'd like to offer my Obeisances to the lotus feet millions of times of my beloved Diksha Guru Dev Sri Sri La Bhakti Vedanta Bonga Swami Maharaj to the lotus feet of my Param Guru Devs Sri Sri La Bhakti Vedanta Narayana Swami Maharaj and Sri Sri La Bhakti Vedanta Vamanga Swami Maharaj and to the lotus feet of Sri Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, to all our Rupanuga Gaudiya Guru Vag, to all Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, all assembled here, and all assembled here. So today is a very auspicious parikram, where we go around Govardhan and visit many, many different, very auspicious places where many beautiful pastimes happened so we will do the places in pairs so each pair i think is is going to be half an hour unless unless things change and then maharaj will tell me if something's changed since we last discussed it so first we'll be going with pujapad chidandi maharaj to dan gati and anayo then we'll be going to Govinda Kund and Punchari with Sri Padnami Maharaj. And then we're returning with Chirandi Maharaj to visit Sarabi Kund and Jatipur. Uh, 
So each of these slots will be half an hour. But before that, Maharaj, Tridandi Maharaj is going to show us the route that we take by the map. And maybe even before that, no, I think after that, there'll be a video. And then Maharaj's 30 minutes will start. So when you are ready, Maharaj, you can take it away. Gurave Gauda Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tara Bhaktaya Namonamaha Omaganat Miranda Syakyan Anjala Shalakaya Chakshu Unmilitam Jina Tasmay Shri Gurave Namaha Yam Prabhajanta Manapetya Mapetya Krityam Dvai Paino Viraha Katara Juhava Putre Titam Maya Tayo Tarabo Vinidustam Sarabhutam Munimana Krishna Bhaktiya Vihina Aparada Lakshay Shiptas Jakarma di Taranga Madhye, Kripa Maitam Sharanam Prapana, Brinde Namaste Charana Ravindam, Bajami Radam Aravinda Netram, Smarami Radam Marudasmitasyam, Vadami Radam Garuna Baradram, Tatoma Manastigati and the Chapi. At first of all, Appa, millions and millions of Dandavat Pranams unto the lotus feet of my most beloved Gurudev. Nitilila Pravishta on Astol Tarazar Shishimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj. And I offer the same again millions and millions of times unto the lotus feet of our most beloved Nitilila Pravishta on Astol Tarazar Shishimad Shila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shila Prabhupada. And all our illustrious Rupanuga Guru Vargya and all the Vaishnav and Vaishnavis present on this thread headed by our Tridandigan headed by Pujapad Bhaktivedanta Nemi Maharaj and all the devotees who will be listening on other platforms like Facebook, etc. YouTube, by Dandavat Pranams to all of you. So yes, uh, our dear Tarunji has described something of our journey today. So we've actually been residing in Govardhan, our Giri Hari Gaudiamat, for the last two nights. We took a spaceship back to Vrindavan yesterday to circumambulate Vrindavan Parikamra because it was omitted previously. So we covered Vrindavan Parikamra. And then yesterday we had some guitar um, on the first verse of Dhammadarastakam. But today we're actually going to start our walking Parikamra covering Giriraj Govardhan, which is filled with so many different pastimes. So initially, I think it's the right time to show you a map of where we're at. Going on mute, Maharaj. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So no. you can you can see from here, if you expand it, so our uh, Gididhari Gaudiamat, yes, you just had the cursor right on the Tarunji, yes, yes, there. So we're going to walk up through the township of Govardhan a little bit. Follow the red line, Tarun. Yes, and then we get to there, and then we take a left, and we go down just to where your cursor is now. That's about Dangati. And then we're going to hear the pastimes there, and a little bit further, Tarunji. And then that's Dhanya Vartan Kund. Oh, you've gone too fast. Way too fast. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Back. Ah, okay. Okay, it, it's very close to Dan Gatti. A little bit more, go up. Tarun? Yes, okay, okay, that'll do, that'll do. Okay, so that's about Dan Gatti, if you've got that image, where um, Dan Nirvratan Kund is. And then we're going to come a little bit further, Tarunji. Yes, keep going. I think about there. That'll do. Um, yes, approximately, maybe higher a little bit. And that'll be um, Anayor or Anore. So we'll stop there in Anore, have some guitar. And then we're going to go further south to Runji. And yes, yes, not too fast. Up a little bit. Up a little bit. Yes. Uh, to that kund, yes, up a little bit higher to that dot, yes. That'll be Govinda kund, and then we'll have Hari guitar there in Govinda kund. Then we're going to come around to the bottom, Tarunji, and we're going to have some Hari guitar in Puchari. 
which is at the bottom where the Ras Stali is situated, and Apsara and Navalkund is situated there, and many other auspicious places are right there. And then we're going to start walking back up the other side and right there. So that's Surabikunj or Surabikund. We're going to stop there, have some Harigata. And then we're going to the next place. That'll be Jetipur. Jetipur. And that's be the last place of Harigata. And from there, we just hike it all the way back to the township of Govardhan. And then we cross over and go back to our... Actually, we don't cross over on this red road going across. We don't walk across like that. Tarun, if you go back across the hill, just for a minute, just to let the... Yes, from there. Now go straight up, follow the little dotted path, and then we come around through the township. Not so high, not so high. Not so... You're going to Radakund. Down, 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 down. Down, 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 down. Yes, yeah, down, down long. Yes, about there. I should have the cursor. And anyway, then you lead us off to the right through the township and you come out the back road. Yes, yes, like that. There's actually a natural paved pathway. Originally, the Babas for 30 years wouldn't allow this motorway road to be built across the back of Gurbadan. They would lie down. Traditionally, every time the government came out to put a road across Gobradan, all the Babas, and there was hundreds of them at that time, would just lie across the road. And somehow it got caught in broiled in court cases. And it went on for 30 years. They held this road back because it's very offensive, really, to drive across. Not even Mahaprabhu would walk with his shoes across. What to speak of driving a truck or a tractor or a motorbike or a car across the back of Govardhan. That's really a Kali Yuga, you know, initiative, whatever. So, but now we have that. And actually, we even drive over this road when we go on our bus journeys now because it's the most convenient place to go. So we utilize it for Krishna's service to take our Parikrama across. Oh, you've lost the place. Where did it go? That was too quick. Oh, sorry. Do you want, still want to say it? Well, yeah, I'm still talking on it. Yeah. Just, yeah. Okay. So uh, I think everyone gets the idea. So from our Gidid Hari Gorimat, then we're going to go around this south end today. This is called the Big End Prikama because it's the longest. And uh, it's probably um, what? Um, um, 9, 10, 11, maybe 12 miles altogether, maybe less. So that's our Prikama for today. And now we have a very beautiful overview, a video that our dear, now you can put the video up, Manjalali that um, Janardhan Prabhu um, uh, made for us yesterday, actually, but we didn't use it. So now Manjalali will have a look at the video, please. Yes, this is a very beautiful video. This is from a drone. Okay, Kusum Sarova. We're going to go right around. Where's the sound? Are you sharing your sound, Manjalali? Sound, yeah. Sorry, we'll correct that. Yeah, one sec. So Let's go in the pun. Govinda Kund. The footprint of Balaram. Coming down to Puchari. Surabikun. Rudrakun. Udapkun. This is Udapkun. Shri 
Shamlakun and Radhakun. Radhakun. Radhakun and Shamakun. Okay, so we've just done an aerial um, parikrama of Gidit Hari Govardhan. So now we're going to go in more detail. So um, there's some very beautiful photographs we have actually of Srila Gurudev um, carrying the parikrama party. If you have a couple of those, Manjulali, that would be nice. With yeah, I, I do have. It's just like I urgently need to leave. I I said like. If not, okay, okay. Yeah. Don't worry. Tarun, Don't could worry. You take leave over? it. Tarun. Yeah, I'm sharing my screen. Uh, no, no. That there's another uh, file. Could you go on the Google Drive um, folder Don't again? Don't worry that's... about it. Don't worry about it, Manjali. Just, okay. just forget it. We'll do it another time. There's some pictures there of, of Gurudev on the Purikama. It's Turan. called Various Tarun. It's also with a zero at the very top of that folder. And it's called it's a word document with various. Yeah, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Hare Krishna Dandavat Pranam. Okay. Yes. Okay. Nice picture here. This is our Purikama party. Heading down with Srila Gurudev and the various sannyasis. And then we go up a little bit, scroll down. Yes, yes. Keep going. And then you come to this is Dangati. This will be the first place I'll be describing shortly. And then is that, this is uh, very Mar, beautiful. Is that kind of opposite where Modi Bhavan, where we used to stay at Modi Bhavan? Is that no, it's it's up. It's up your shoulder. It's, it's, it's kind of in that area. It's very, very, very close. It's probably a seven or eight minute walk to your right from Modi Bhavan. And it's right where the road goes across the back of Govardhan and we go to the left. And we, it's the first place we come to on the Prikrama. Tarunji, scroll up a little bit. Oh, like that. Okay, that's, that's, that's done near Vatan Kund. That'll be the place after. Dangati. Keep going. Uh, yes, and now we come to another picture. This is our Parikrama again, walking down the road. Very ecstatic. Keep going up. Um, Tarunji, yes, this is our Parikrama party again. Keep going. Tarunji. Yes, there's Srila Gurudev. Very ecstatic. Yes, keep going. This is our party. <coughs> all, all saffron there in the front. Keep going up. Now we've come to Govinda Kund, where we're going to hear a little bit later from Pujapanim. This is Govinda Kund again. Keep going up. And that's leaving Govinda Kund and walking down towards. This is Surabi Kunj. This is where we take breakfast traditionally of uh, Malpura and uh, etc. Is that the end of it? Oh, apparently not. That's still Surabhi Kund. A little yeah. bit more Taranji. Keep going up. This is okay. the final one. Yeah, yes, yes. Go up then. Take it up. Let's see it. Yeah, this is Gurudev. Gurudev would always become very, um, even more enlivened when he came to Gurudev. Okay, Taranji. Thank you. Thank you. So... Um, as you can see, the mood of the Parikrama party and Srila Gurudev is always very ecstatic and electric when we come to Govardhan. There's some special um, potent um, energy that is always emanating from Giridaj Govardhan. So now I'm just going to begin my um, offering of about 30 minutes so that 
Would you pardon me, Maharaj can keep track of the time now. Probably take up till about 11 o'clock-ish. So now we've come to Dan Gatikun. This is the first stop that we all make and we offer our Dandavat pronouns here. And we have a wonderful darshan right up close of Giriraj. We saw Srila Gurudev offering his prostrated Dandavats just then. And the rocks of Govardhan come right down to that very place so we can rub his feet, his lotus feet there. We can massage them and we can really be up close to Govardhan at this particular point. And then we all sit and we hear the very, very beautiful pastime. Traditionally, thousands of years ago, as is still today, there's a natural gully that cuts through this area. As Has it just frozen on my end? You showed a... He's he's frozen. He's 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 often coming back. He'll do the uh, he'll do the. Um, Your shoulder, you what? Oh, he's back. He's back. You cut out, Maraj. Oh, we lost about oh, really? the last minute. You got up to um, natural gully. Oh yeah, a natural gully here, where the um, bridge bases would always come through this gully to reach the next kund after here, which is Govinda kund and the township of Anore or Anayor. So in Govindakund, which is to the south, about um, three kilometers, um, Baguri Rishi was holding a yagya. And all the gopis, of course, they had heard this auspicious Rishi was performing a great yagya there. So in wanting to get the favor of all the great devotees, the gopis dutifully would um, get together their mudkas, their clay pots of yogurt and butter and ghee and all kinds of delicious substances to carry to offer as an offering to the sacrifice that was being performed in Govindakund. So they would have to come through this gully to reach Govindakund. So Krishna and his sakas decided to set up a toll gate knowing exactly that the gopis would be coming through this particular gully at this time. So Krishna is always restless to enjoy pastimes with the gopis on any excuse whatsoever. So they set up their sticks, etc. And when the gopis came through singing with their pots on their heads, immediately they were confronted by a barrier of cowherd boys. And Krishna was demanding that they pay their toll tax before they pass through. And then Krishna was demanding, what are you carrying? So then they began to describe the beautiful milk preparations they were all carrying with them. And of course, Madhu Mangal's lips were just drooling, thinking of all the um, sweet butter, etc., and yogurt that they were carrying. And Krishna, he said, well, you can't come through unless, until you've paid a tax. So Lalita immediately stepped forward and said, who do you think you are to proclaim, you know, that, that you uh, have the right to tax us? And Krishna responded very boldly, I am the owner of this land. I am the owner of this kingdom of Giriraj Govardhan. And Lalita said, oh, since when? How, how, how come you think you're the, the king of this area? And Krishna responds, he said, because I'm married to Vrinda, Vrinda Devi. She is my wife, and she owns all of Braj, so I am the king. And the gopis, they began laughing and laughing. And they turned to Vrindadevi, who was right there with them, and said, is this man your husband? And Vrindadevi looked at Krishna and said, never. This black person is most certainly not my husband. And then Vrindavan, uh, Vrindadevi, she says at that point, anyway, I have given the title of Vrindavan Ishwari, to Srimati Radhika, I have given her the ownership of Vrindavan. So I'm no longer the, the, uh, the queen of Vrindavan anyway. Srimati Radhika is. She is the queen. And she is certainly not married to Krishna. So then all the Sakis begin to laugh and laugh. They have actually defeated Krishna. But Krishna won't 
be um, embarrassed by this situation. He's still very bold and he's still strongly demanding taxes and they barter very beautifully. And there's a whole long description. Raghunath Das, he writes beautiful commentary on that. And also um, um, Rupa Goswami, he's written in the um, Dan Kaili Komudi and the Dan Kaili Chintamani. Both of these very beautiful books have described this pastime extensively where um, Krishna is demanding this tax. And finally, after much banter and jokes and um, very sweet engagements with each other, the rasas at this time would be overflowing between Krishna and the gopis and the suckers and all the rest of the gopis in the beautiful atmosphere of Giriraj himself or herself. And finally, they would pay a tax. They would pay some of their yogurt and some of their sweet butter, etc. They they would they distribute it to the suckers, who took it with great relish, and then they passed on their journey down to Govindakund to offer the rest of the offerings that was left after Krishna had taxed them to the yagya that was going on in Govindakund. But the following day. The gopis decided we've had enough of Krishna hijacking us like this. So they made a plan. And there's a kund about half a mile from here south. This is called Dan Nirvatan Kund. And this is where, or Dan Nirvatan Kund, this is where the gopis, they got their revenge on Krishna. The gopis arranged so that just two or three gopis will be there with um, pots of butter, etc., knowing that the cowherd boys were in the vicinity the next day and the cowherd boys would approach them. So all the cowherd boys did. And as soon as they approached these um, three or four gopis carrying their pots, then immediately they made a secret call and thousands and thousands and thousands of gopis emerged from behind the rocks and the bushes and trees of this area of Danyarvatankur. They captured Krishna just like we're going to hear in Sankari Kaur when we go to Varshana. There's a very narrow gully there. And Krishna also was captured there by the gopis. So here again, he's captured and he's bound uh, by the gopis. Gopis are very strong. And they bind him and they dress him up in a, um, a skirt and uh, blouse, etc. And then they place a pot of yogurt on his head and Lalita again she aims a rock at that yogurt pot and it breaks and all the yogurt falls over Krishna. So Krishna is like having an abhishek right in the middle of the, um, the gopis' presence and they all are laughing and cheering. Madhu Mangal, he's become so afraid he's ran away. So this is Danir Vatan Kund, where the gopis, they take their revenge for Krishna's mischievous uh, toll collection in Dangati. So these two kunds are very close to each other. And we go there and only briefly hear these pastimes because there's many, many pastimes on this perikrama today. So each of the pastimes has to be quite condensed. So these, I'm sure many of the devotees who have been to these beautiful um, pastimes, the atmosphere is really surcharged and sweet. So now we continue down towards this village called Anayor or Anore, either they pronounce it Anore. And this village um, signifies when or represents the very place where Krishna, when he convinced his father, Nanda Baba, and all the elder Brijabhasis, they were preparing their yagya for Indradev to bless them with rain for their crops, etc., and the grasses to grow for the nourishment of the cows. And Krishna, he was wanting to purify Indra's pride because he was aware that Indra's pride had grown beyond its uh, necessary bounds as the king of heaven. So Krishna inquired from his father in such a beautiful way. This description in the Srimad Bhagavatam is very 
delightful to read where Krishna is asking his father in a very humble way to please describe to him what is the nature of this sacrifice and yagya that he's performing. Is it um, ordained by Shastra? Who, wh what is the purpose of it? What is the focus of it? And he requests his father if he thinks that um, he is intelligent enough, Krishna is intelligent enough, please explain to me all the background about this yagya that you're preparing. And then Nanda Baba begins to describe how they're doing all of this for the satisfaction of Indra, because by his merciful reigns, everything is nourished, and that's how they get their sustenance. <clears throat> but then Krishna argues with him very beautifully in front of all the assembly, the Brijbasis now, they've all gathered around, and Krishna is speaking very potently. And he just starts to describe about the philosophy called karma mimams. He says nothing is dependent on Indra's um, or the demigods' uh, whims or desires or um, uh, like that. It, it, it's all dependent upon karma. Why, why does the rain sometimes fall in the ocean? Why does it sometimes fall on rocks where it has no use at all? Are they performing some sort of yagya? So everything is actually happening by karma. And this, in fact, is not Vedically authentic, the philosophy that Krishna is preaching, but because he's presenting it in such a sweet, sublime way, all the Brijbasis, they accept it. This is called the Karma Mimams philosophy. And it's described that Madhu Mangal, he realizes that Krishna isn't really presenting the Shastric uh, conclusions. All the cowherd suckers, they all know exactly what is the Siddhanta of all Shastra. They all know this. They all really understand this. But somehow, by Krishna's sweet, flavorous words, um, he convinces all the bridge Basis to do like this. He says, actually, we should take all these ingredients and we should offer them to Giriraj Govardhan. Giriraj Govardhan is our maintainer and our sustainer. It is by his mercy and grace that our cows are flourishing with so many uh, good grasses to take, etc., the fruits, the sweet water from Govardhan's rivulets and fountains, etc., and waterfalls. Everything is being given by this Giriraj Govardhan. He's supplying everything. Vardhana means nourishing. Go Vardhan. Go means the cow. So go Vardhan. He's nourishing the cows. So Krishna begins to glorify Giriraj Govardhan in this way. And all the bridge Basis are totally entranced by Krishna's speaking here. So they all agree with him. Yes. And then Krishna says, I will direct you if you like. And then Krishna begins to direct how the yagya should be performed. The brahmanas should be fed sumptuously. And then many preparations should be made for the pleasure of Giriraj Maharaj and all Girirani. I'll explain this in a minute. So um, uh, Krishna is directing all the Brijbasis to make beautiful offerings, uh, make mountains of offerings, mountains of sweet rice, mountains of halava, mountains of pakuras, rice, dals, etc., lakes of dals, lakes of beautiful nectar drinks, so much mountainous amounts of uh, boga are being collected to offer for the pleasure of Giriraj. This is all taking place exactly where we're standing in the township of Anore. And then Krishna, he manifests from his body another form of Giriraj to rise up behind the mountain and allow all the Brijbasis to see his form. They see this huge, effulgent, beautiful form, having many, many arms and beautiful wide eyes and a beautiful, huge mouth, lotus mouth. And immediately, Giriraj, he begins to accept all these offerings and he eats all these offerings. He takes them all. And then he's crying out for more more. It's not sufficient. He's actually consumed everything that they've laid out. He's consumed all the 
lakes of Dal. He's consumed all the rice, the pakoras, the halva, the mountains of um, boga that have been offered to him. And because Krishna was actually performing the um, puja to offer to Giriraj. And so Giriraj, he's accepting everything. And then Giriraj, he begins to call out, Anore, Anore, Anore means give me more, bring me more, bring me more. He's not satisfied with this huge amount that he's just been offered. And he wants more and more. So the bridge Bajis again run to their homes. They take everything that's left in their homes and they offer it for the pleasure of Giriraj. And Giriraj, he accepts all their offerings. So this has many meanings because this is a, a mood of total submissive um, surrendered um, offering to the, for the pleasure of Giriraj. They're withholding nothing. They're giving everything for his pleasure. And then he's still calling out, give me more, give me more. And then one Brahmin steps forward with a large plate filled with Tulsi Devi. So then he offers this to uh, Giriraj. And then Giriraj says, Taptosmi, Taptosmi. Yes, now I'm satisfied. Now I'm satisfied. And then it's described that he washes his hands in the kund and he sprinkles the shower of water on the grasses around him, which immediately blossom with beautiful, fragrant grasses. So all the bridge bhasis, they witness this. Krishna is standing with the bridge bhasis, but he's manifested this other form of Giriraj just to um, strengthen the nishta, the faith of the bridge bhasis, that in fact, what they did was correct in offering all of their um, uh, boga, all of their food preparations for the pleasure of Giriraj. So this has given them great confidence. Yes, we have seen Giriraj ourselves. So then uh, when Giriraj is satisfied, then he disappears. And then again, all of that prashadam now manifests. And then the bridge basis, they partake of that beautiful offering. This, this is the first Anukut festival, this um, extensive offering of boga, boga, um, uh, preparations for Giriraj's pleasure. And then we know what happens. Well, after this, then Krishna directs all the cows to be in placed in the front and then many um, carts to be uh, carrying the ladies, etc. And then they begin to circumambulate Govardhan with much music and beautiful festivity. And Krishna directs all the bridge bhasis to wear their finest dress and bring all their instruments, etc. And it's a most beautiful, festive atmosphere that is taking place. And it's described by Srila Jiva Goswami that the music from this beautiful kirtan uh, in their parikrama gives Indra Dev a headache in Swagaloka. He's feeling disturbed by this. He's very, very angry indeed. And he begins to uh, voice his anger against this young cowherd boy. Who does he think he is to stop my yagya, which is intended for me, he becomes very, very angry. And then, of course, we know the next part of the pastime is where he gathers all these shaman taka clouds and they come uh, black, such black clouds to inundate the whole of Braj. So this is another section to the pastime. Actually, as we go around our parikrama, we're going to hear many areas and descriptions of the pastimes. We're going to have an extensive description on Friday, for example, when we glorify Govardhan uh, directly and the festival of Giriraj Puja will be held on Friday. But as we go around, all different areas of the pastime are going to be unfolded and revealed for the devotee's pleasure. But this particular pastime here at Anul Ray is where Giriraj is displaying his huge, enormous form. Therefore, devotees, when they have Shalagram Shilas, they, Govardhan Shilas, they, um, they can worship that Govardhan Shila as being non-different to this Giriraj. 
that displayed his form to take the offerings of the bridge Basis. It's very interesting, actually, if you live in Vrindavan for some time and go to the houses around Govardhan or Radha Kund or any of the villages there, most of the home, homes, they have different deities of different personalities, but they all have a Govardhan Shila. And it's the Govardhan Shila that they all offer their boga to in all of the houses there. They all have their Govardhan Shila and their offering daily all of their different preparations to the Govardhan Shila. So this mood of offering to Giriraj, because Giriraj himself is so munificent. The gopis, they describe Hantari Amadir Abala Haridasa Varya, Yadarama Krishna, Charna, Sparsha, Pramoda, Yan, um, this very beautiful verse from the Venu Git. Um, what's that last line? Manum Tanoti Sahago Ganayas Tayo Yat Puna Pantya Surivas Kandare Kandare Mula. The gopis are considering that Giriraj Govardhan is the Haridas Avarya. He is the greatest servant of the Lord because he gives his whole body in service to the Lord, even more so than Yudhisthira Maharaj or Udal. So he is considered by Sri Radhika is declaring this verse. Hantariya Madhira Abala Vilasi. Hantariya Adira Abala Haridasavarya. That he is the Haridasavarya. So this is the celebration that we um, remember at this auspicious place. It's interesting just to appreciate this particular village where we're standing has such a humble um, atmosphere about it. The residents all appear extremely um, uh, without any type of material goods. They live in very, very simple, the most simple places. Out of all of Govardhan, actually, this is the most um, humble seeming place that we come to. And it's in this place of the deepest humility that the sweetest pastimes describing the worship of Giriraj took place. The, the residents are always very joyful here. And, but they have, when you walk through, you see they just have very, very tiny, tiny little shops. They have a few vegetables on the street selling the vegetables. And generally the whole um, atmosphere of this village is very much um, without any material, um, uh, what do you say, objects, around the children look very very free so it's 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 a remarkable purifying atmosphere to be in so it's here that we always hear this aspect of course there are so many other pastimes that we'll hear about pulastya rishi and how giriraj actually ended up here there are so many pastimes uh um pujapad nemi maharaj he will describe something in govinda kund so i've left lots of areas out but this particular pastime of Govardhan saying anore anore give me more give me more this is the pastime we celebrate here so anore kijai also in this same village just as we start to come out is a very famous kund called sankarshan kund and at the bottom of that kund was found a very beautiful six foot blackish balaram who's housed just right beside the kund in a in a house now, not even in a temple. And you can have darshan of that very um, tall, beautiful Balaram deity today. He's there. We can go and see him. But I think our um, Nemi Maharaj, he will describe something of the pastime of Sankarshan kund, if he chooses to, as well as Govinda kund. So that's just a little window into the... Um, festive um, uh, atmosphere of Giriraj, where we're wandering around today. So I'm going to leave it there and wait for um, Pujabad Nemi Maharaj to continue our journey through to Govinda Kund and then Puchari. And then I'll speak again on Surabhi Kunj and Jetipur, and then we'll return to our mat for lunch. Vavancha kalpa thurubhyas cha, kripa sinda viva cha, patitanam pavni viva vaishnava evi namaha.
Wow, thank you so much, Maharaj. That was really beautiful. Um, I think, yeah, I got back into the flow of taking all of the notes and I took so many notes there about those detailed pastimes. I really like this pastime where the gopis ambush uh, Krishna and the suckers. It's, it's such a sweet pastime. I remember walking there, how the local people, they take a toll to to get past I think I'm not sure if you mentioned that but that that was quite funny I'm not sure I think I might have walked past without paying it I don't know if that's an offense <laughs> um but yeah it was, it was such a sweet place and also the story um of Govardhan and the feeding of Govardhan I had um a question so Krishna manifests his I wasn't Oh, yes. Okay, sure. Um, Krishna manifests his form as Giri Raj. Is that how it works? Yes, exactly. Yes. In front of Govardhan? In the back of Govardhan. He rises above the hill with a huge, huge form. You just see his head and shoulders and many arms, big eyes and a huge gaping mouth. And then he devours all of these mountains of offerings that he's been offered. And all the bridge basis are standing in front of him, just in astonishment mm. that the personality has actually shown his form. Mm. Wow. Amazing. It is. <laughs> it's astonishing. <laughs> Still haven't woke it up yet. So it's like, wow. Ma Maraj, um, yeah. you talked about Krishna instructing Nanda Baba in the philosophy of karma, something karma. M mimams. Oh yeah, mimams. I you can find a, a description in the Jaiva Dharma in the glossary. You can look that up actually. Yeah, I didn't quite onto. get how he got from karma mimams onto Baba. You should be taking shelter of Giriraj. What's the what's Giriraj the, is much more local and and he's right there. Giriraj wasn't being acknowledged as the powerful personality that he actually is. Krishna is explaining that Giriraj is a powerful personality. You should have faith in Giriraj. You should worship him. He's the one who's supplying everything, not Indra. Why are you worshiping Indra? Indra, he is giving the rain to everybody. Everyone's um, due karma will come to them. It's not that uh, the, the demigods are going to give you more or less than your karma um, allows you, you can't right. go beyond the, those bounds but, but Krishna specifically wanted to bring everyone's attention to glorify Giriraj and for posterity like now we're 5,000 years later and we're talking about the same pastime and Krishna wanted this pastime of course Giriraj Govardhan was two miles high at that time Giriraj Govardhan was it's described that the shadow of Govardhan would cover the city of Mathura when the sun was setting. So that's how high Giriraj was. So Giriraj is sinking. One must have seen the day. So Giriraj was very much bigger. Thanks, Maharaj. What was the name of the second? You had Dan, Dan Gat, and then you had Dan, Dan Nirvatan Kund. Nir Nirvatan Kund, yes. That's the next one. That's where the gopis got and their final revenge. quick question, Maharaj. Name of the Rishi at the beginning. Baguri. B-H-A-G-U-R-I. Baguri. Thanks, Maharaj. Baguri Rishi. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Tarunji. Mm, yeah, we have one more question from Jiva Pavan Prabhu. Maharaj, I... Uh... Only if you think it's a, it's it's appropriate or if there's time. Um, Shri Gurudev also referred to Govardhan as Giri Rani. And sometimes we see even in a mature temple that the Govardhan Shiller is decorated with braids. So just very briefly, let me just jump in ahead of you. Um, so so Gurudev has described that we can worship Giri Raj as the greatest servant of Krishna or Krishna directly, or as Giri Rani. So Gurudev described only one time in Govardhan itself during a Gorpunin festival, Gurudev described this, in fact, in front of us all. How can Giriraj possibly be male? 
there's no other male in the caves and the conjurers when the confidential pastimes are being performed. So therefore, he proclaimed and told us this is actually a third aspect of Giriraj called Girirani. So that's the only time I've ever heard him say like that. But from that one time, hundreds of Srila Gurudev's followers took to Girirani Shilas, you know. I've had for years Girirani Shila with beautiful decorations, etc. So, so that, uh, by the way, while I've got you here for one second, Prabhu, don't forget the question you asked yesterday about Yashoda Mai's color, because I got a nice response from Shamrani. So if you can remind us at the end of the class, and I want to give you that answer because I promised I would give it today. Okay. On, okay. on that point of um, Girirani, um, Shamarani Didi mentioned, that, and who is the best of devotees, that's Radharani. So in one sense, we can also see Girirani as Radharani. <laughs> she said like this. But anyway, I, you made the point that I wanted to hear. So Hare Krishna, thank yeah. you. Dandavas Prabhu. Okay, back to our beloved Nemi Maharaj. He's chomping at the bit there, waiting to get to Govinda Kund. Hare Bhav, just before you get to Govinda Kund, uh, Kujapad Nemi Maharaj, Ramananda Prabhu is asking, what did Gurudev say in 1996 in reference <laughs> to your message? <laughs> <laughs> That's a secret. Nine 1996 about what? About Girirani. Oh, oh, he just explained to us. He was standing in front of the altar and he just explained what I've just said. How yeah. can... But he also said in 1996, he also mentioned. What did he say? Same thing. He said, actually, he said that in the Shastras, it's described that this is a manifestation from Srimadhi Radhika's heart because... Uh, no male form can be there when Radha and Krishna are performing their confidential pastimes. Yes, yes, yes. Same, same. Okay, same thing. Yeah. How can it be? Whenever we explain this to anybody, they get it straight away. How possibly can Giriraj be male? There's only one Purush, and that's Krishna. There can't be a second. So it just makes too much sense for the devotees to have any doubt about. Mm. Yes. Okay, Tarunji. It seems to me that there's both aspects. <clears throat> Three aspects. No, I mean as Giriraj and as Girirani. Girirani is very confidential form. Mm -hmm. But there's Hari Dasavarya also, so we can worship our, our Govardhan Shila as the servant of Krishna, or we can worship the Govardhan Shila as Krishna directly himself, or as Girirani. So it's it's three options that we actually have. Many, many devotees worship their Govardhan Shila as directly in Aishwarya mood, as Krishna himself. Mm. So, Taranji. So, yes. Harry Ball. Wow, that was a lot of nectarian guitar. Um, we are now going on along our route and down to the bottom with Pujapad Nemi Maharaj to Govinda Kund and Punchari. So um, I have some pictures. Shall I just show them all at the start? And then you can probably... Yes, please. Yes. Okay, so desktop one. Govinda Kund. Oh, Madhavendra Puri Pads. Uh, Bhajan Kutin. Hmm. And then is that yeah, this is Puncheri. And then this is Srinath Ji at Govindakund. And then okay, then we're going too far. That's Rabbi Khan, that comes later. Okay, Harry Ball. Again, Chinirand Tasya. Gyananjana Shlakaya, Chakshuran Militang Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha, Nama on Vishnu Padayam, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Samiti Namane, Nama on Vishnu Padayam, Adatikaya Priyatmane, 
श्री श्रीमान भक्ति वेदांत नारायण जीव मन वंशकृपाचुटिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्रियाद्वैत गिराधार शिवासरी गौरभक्त हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे अपराध लक्ष्य क्षिप्ताजित रंग मध्य कृपा मैत शरण प्रपन्न वृंदे नमस्ते All days are auspicious, but Govardhan is especially auspicious, especially dear to Shri Guru Dev. He lived at Govardhan for some time, and he was performing one or two uh, Govardhan parikramas every day, and deeply absorbed in reading Shri Chaitanya Charitamrita, in deep separation mood, reflecting the mood of Shri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Mm. His place of residence, actually, it. It's been submerged in the um, Radha Giriraj uh, mat, the Giridhari mat there. So progressing along <clears throat> after what Pujabad Sri Chidanda Maharaj has, has described to us. So we come to Govinda Kund. We've seen this picture. Govinda Kund, yeah, we've heard that. Indra became enraged. Krishna, externally, he was establishing that there's no need for, de- uh, for demigod worship. This is one aspect of what was going on. The devotees don't worship demigods. We respect the demigods. We offer respects to the demigods uh, because they're the, the empowered representatives of Krishna within this material world. But we don't worship them on the same level as Nanda Baba was intending to do. That's one aspect. But the other aspect is, he's telling Indra, then who do you think you are? You think, you think the Braj Basis, they're just simple village people. They are my personal associates. You think they should be worshiping you? No way. They're eternal associates in the spiritual world. They're totally totally absorbed in the highest modes of love to me, loving service to me, loving me and pleasing me in every conceivable way. And you're just king of heaven. I'm puffed up like anything. So he, he was establishing this, that the Braj Basis don't worship demigods because they themselves are more a millions and incomparably more than the demigods. When the gopis are worshipping Kachayani, actually they're worshipping Yogamaya, they're not worshipping uh, material demigod as Durga, the spiritual Durga. So here at Govinda Kund, mm, Krishna is described that when Indra sent his Samvartak clouds, she uh, Vrindavan does not Vrindavan does Taku, excuse me, Kavikarnapur. He's given a very detailed description of this. So, Krishna, after when the tremendous torrents of rain came down, and all the inhabitants of Vrindavan were in despair, so they came and took shelter of Krishna. and Krishna said, yes, I will perform a pastime to please you all, to to protect you all. And and then he lifted up Govardhan like a child picks up a mushroom. Now, Govardhan is huge, like Pujabhad Chidani Maharaj is two miles high. Giriraj, king of mountains. Giriraj at the moment doesn't look like the king of mountains. So, um, and then
uh, the lifting of Govardhan Hill produced an angry, loud noise that crushed the pride of the elephants guarding the eight directions. Mm. So the Krishna pushed up Govardhan so that he came right through the clouds, these storm clouds over Govardhan, right through the rows of peaks along the peaks of Giriraj challenged the trees and into the celestial forest. The lions living on top of Govardhan Hill mistook the hovering clouds for elephants. And using their powerful sharp claws, they ripped apart that cluster of elephant clouds and the clouds are running backwards and forwards. Mount Kailash was shivering in fright thinking, oh, who is this covering the cloud, the sky? How could this happen? Mount Sumeru panicked. Overwhelmed by fear, the elephants of the directions jumped into Manasi Ganga. Uh, Giriraj served Gokul as a jewel bedecked umbrella that couldn't be moved by the fierce winds or pierced by the razor sharp lightning bolts of Indra. Then the Brajvasis, they find a huge, beautiful, lush, transcendental valley beneath Giriraj Govardhan. There's so much grass for the, for the cows. And then Krishna says, when I lifted the hill, huge chunks of earth fell off the bottom and made a natural boundary wall around the perimeter. So this will keep out the torrential rains. Don't worry. Don't worry about your gardens and your houses and everything else. This place will please everyone. So everyone gathered around Krishna in their different respective groups. So why did Krishna uh, perform this pastime? There's so many reasons, but ultimately, ultimately, in these pastimes, there's always the desire to have a specific meeting with the gopis. So generally speaking, married gopis, they cannot look at anybody else. They couldn't associate with Krishna, but because everybody now is crushed in underneath Govardhan, so everybody is just looking at Krishna. And they can do that without reproach from their elders. Their elders can't even see them looking at Krishna because they're looking at Krishna as well. Uh, so, mm, Mother Yashoda is worrying about all oh, Krishna's his, his tummy is getting thinner, he's not eating enough, and he's playing a flute with his right hand. Now, you can't play the whole, all flute melodies with your right hand. Mm. But Krishna's playing flute melodies with his right hand as he lifts up Govardhan with the pinky of his left, not even the pinky, with the fingernail of the pinky of his left hand. Left hand is where the gopis are, Shakti, his energies. And everybody's looking at Govardhan the cowherd boys, they're saying, Krishna, you must be really tired. Look, we'll, and they're all holding up their sticks and saying, look, we're going to hold up Govardhan and you just take a rest. And Mother Yashoda is so worried. Oh, you're going to get thin. You're getting tired. And then Madhumanga says, ah, don't talk like this. Why do you say Krishna's in distress? Look, what's that angry Indra done for us? He's attacked us with his clouds, lightning bolts. And now just look at this dazzling sweetness Krishna's manifesting. Oh, if Indra hadn't become angry, we wouldn't have a, we wouldn't have had a chance to relish this. And then Mother shows him, no, 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 he's getting tired. How can you say this is a good idea? He's wet from the locks of curly hair on Krishna's forehead are wet from perspiration. His hands and feet have a ruddy, ruddy color. How can anyone tolerate such hardship? Actually, Krishna is looking at the gopis. And there's description in, there's one verse in uh, Nectar uh, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So Krishna is looking at the gopis and naturally his eyes fall on the voluptuous breasts of the gopis. And seeing that then he begins to shake, his hand begins to shake. And Giraj Govardhan is beginning to wobble a little. Everyone becomes, oh, very anxious. And the cowherd men and the cowherd women, oh, don't let Giriraj fall, don't let Giriraj fall. And Baladev is smiling because he knows that Krishna can't possibly let Giriraj fall. So he's laughing that the gopas and gopis, elderly gopas and gopis are making this mistake. 
And Krishna sees Baladev laughing like this. And he thinks, oh, oh, he's seen me looking at the gopis. And he becomes quite bashful. Mm. So Krishna said, look, Mount Govardhan's floating on his own in the open sky. I told you that. This, I'm, just, I'm just an instrument of the will of Govardhan. So these exchanges were going on. And at last, Indra came. And he, he was infuriated that nothing has been touched. Even the, the animals and the insects and the leaves on top of Govardhan, they're not being affected at all. They've been all protected. And in the end, uh, Indra became really frustrated. And in the end, he just called off the clouds. And then the rain stopped and the sun came out. And there's drip, 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 drip. And then the dripping stopped as well. And the birds are singing. And then Krishna sends the cows out with the boys. And the cows go out. They're waiting for a little. And then they go out like a volley of arrows. And then they look around and they see Krishna is still under Govardhan. Oh, and then they come back to be around him. And then gradually everybody goes back to their places. And Krishna puts Govardhan down. Mm. So after that, there's discussion later on uh, when we get to Nandagaon. We'll describe this discussion between the elderly cowherd men and uh, Nandababa. And then after that again, uh, Krishna one day, he's, he goes by himself, walking along, the, along uh, Govardhan, deliberately walking by himself. And Indra comes with Surabhi. Surabhi, um, Surabhi cows, they're Kamadenas, they're wish fulfilling cows. So Indra has gone to Govardhan, uh, to Brahma, and he said, Look, I've just tried to destroy Braj. What should I do? I heard you tried to steal the cowherd boys and the cows, but I've, I've done something much worse. Now, what am I going to do? How can I placate Krishna? And Brahmaji said, Well, I made a mistake. I went by myself to after I'd done that. And I offered prayers to Krishna. And to be honest, I don't know if he accepted. I don't know if he even heard them. He was just sitting there, like with yogurt in his hand, wrong hand. So I don't know. I would advise you that you have somebody whom Krishna loves to speak on your behalf. So Indra went with Surabhi because Surabhi is like a very, very beautiful cow. And Krishna loves cows. So Surabhi came in front of Krishna and um, began to apologize to Krishna on behalf of Indra. And she said, actually, I've got somebody, with, I've got somebody behind me uh, who's actually, even he's afraid to come in front of you. He's so ashamed of what he's done. He's afraid to come in front of you. And then Krishna says, okay, he, can, he could come. Uh, and then Indra came forward and he fell down on the ground. <clears throat> and um, say, uh, Kavikanapur says that Krishna wiped the tears from his thousand eyes. Indra's got a thousand eyes on his body. And he got down from his mountain of false pride. And he lay on the ground, surrendered to the Lord. And it seemed, because he's got so many gorgeous gems, and the lights from these gorgeous gems worshipping Krishna's lotus feet. And then he's offering prayers and apologizing that you're actually the king, you're the lord of everyone, and I'm, I've been puffed up just thinking that I'm the king of heaven. Mm. So please be kind to me. I understand that you chastised me. So please be kind to me. Now, Brahmaji has been following behind with Kinaras and Apsaras and all sorts. So when Indra uh, became somewhat purified from his false pride, they commenced an auspicious bathing ceremony. And this took place at Govindakund. So when we come on the Parikrama mark, 
Parikama path. So Govinda Kund is quite a, a, a broad Kund. Now on the far side from that, we saw uh, Madhavendra Puripad's Bhajan Kutti. So Madhavendra Puripad was performing Bhajan. He was so deeply absorbed, he didn't even know whether it was day or night. I'll speak about that a little later. And then directly opposite his Bhajan Kutti, there's a very, very beautiful place, which is actually where the Abhishek ceremony took, took place. Uh, and there's a beautiful one very twisted tree making a, a, a kunja there. So that's right at the foot of Govardhan. Every, they began uh, auspicious bathing ceremony, huge Abhishek. Brahma was there, four Kumars, Uma, Mahadev, Tamburu, Narad. Tamburu is Narad's uh, Vina. Savita, so many rishis and sages, the wives of the demigods came, the apsaras came, they were watching from the sky. And then Govardhan made a beautiful throne. And Varuna held a white umbrella of Krishna's head. And then Vayu is the wind, so his movement. So his hands trembling in ecstatic devotion. He's fanning Krishna with a chamara whisk. And the full moon made a beautiful mirror full of jewels. And then um, the Lord's conch shell made beautiful aus auspicious sounds. And Sudarshan Chakra made many lamps in all directions. His lotus flower expanded into many white umbrellas. And his club stood like a jeweled pillar for the bathing ceremony. So this is the um, awesome aspect of Krishna. In Braj, usually he doesn't, he doesn't have the conch shell, he doesn't have his Sudarshan chakra or the white lotus flower uh, or the club. But here, there, this is an auspicious, awesome gathering for the benefit of the demigods. And then all the pers personified forms of the oceans, the rivers, the ponds, the lakes, they all came with pots of water to bathe Krishna. Mother Bhumi collected very, very beautiful earth in a jeweled box, and then she came and offered to Krishna slowly. And then all the herbs and medicinal plants personified, they all came forward and they presented themselves to Krishna's service. Just like we hear that, you know, those who use uh, plants in their ceremonies, so they are worshiping the, the personalities of the plants. So here we're seeing that these personalities, they're, I'm not recommending plant ceremonies, by the way, but I'm just saying that here, these personalities of plants, medicinal plants, they're presenting themselves to Krishna's service. And then great trees like Banyan people and others, they came to give in person to give Krishna leaves. And then the forest gods came with water pots, with coconuts and fruits. The nine jewels came and mm, the goddess of the Malai mountain gave best quality sandalwood, made fragrant paste. Parvati gave him a necklace. Seven rishis plucked fresh lotus buds from Mandakini and offered them to the Lord. And the sun god made lo lotus flowers blossom, blossom. So various... Mm, mantras and prayers being chanted. And then Lord Brahma, so he arranged who is going to bathe. So all the most elevated ladies in the universe, but before that, the senior people of Vrindavan came, the senior ladies of Vrindavan came. And with their hearts dripping in praying, they bathed Krishna with Panchamrit, Panchagavya, and the milk from Surabhi's milk bag. And the gasping at the beauty of Krishna with all the milk and all these substances on his beautiful transcendental body. Is this a monsoon cloud being bathed in moonshine? Is it a concentration of all blueness covered with white? Is it a hill of blue sapphires covered by the pure water of crystal gems? Then all came forward and 
Then the Sahasrapatra means they had a, a bathing bathing pot with a thousand holes and they're showering him with clear camphorated water. And, and then after that, some pretty chaste girls dried his beautiful body with fine soft cloths. Different girls dried his hair, his chest, his hands, his legs, his feet. One young girl with the mood of an intimate lover wrapped Krishna's body with a fresh dry cloth while removing the wet one and wringing it out. And then Parvati told them how to dress him very, very beautifully. So then they, uh, so, so what's Krishna's mood in all of this? Is he thinking, wow, these demigods, they're really putting it on. I mean, this, you know, we have a good time with the gopes and the gopis like that, but they don't do anything like that. You don't get the jewels. You don't get the eminent personalities. Was he thinking like this? No, he wasn't. He was a little disturbed. He was saying that, oh, my confidential pastimes with the gopes and gopis are being temporarily, uh, temporarily interrupted. So, mm, I mean, I just got to. Oh, no, now there's two of you. Hare Ball. Hare Krishna. Okay, I'm going to go on this one now, close down the other one. Sure. So, um, then... Oh, you're on mute, Maharaj. The sonification of Gopal Mantra appeared. And then Brahmaji said, oh, now I will also worship Krishna by chanting this mantra. And Indra, this time, he gave Krishna the name Govinda. Govinda is the one who's worshipping the cows. Uh, increasing, go, means uh, the cows and the earth and the brahmanas. He's, he's helping all of them. He's worshipping all of them and protecting all of them. Mm. So after this lavish, the incredibly lavish ceremony, bit by bit, everybody remained, uh, everybody left. And then Indra and Surabhi, they just remained for a while. And Krishna addressed Indra in a happy, humorous mood. He said, now is your anger pacified? Uh, so is your anger pacified? Mm. I didn't, I wasn't subduing your anger out of revenge or enmity, but I wanted to show how your actions are full of false pride. I can't bear to see my own devotees possessing false pride. So we know that Gurudev also, he used to uh, perform operations, heart operations on his devotees to bring us into line. I remember one time I came in, I'd been staying with somebody nice I'd met in an airport office. Uh, very, very nice person. So he was ISKCON or kind of coming out of ISKCON. And I gradually, gradually, this is way back, 97, 98, maybe, gradually introduced, you know, the idea of Gaudiya Math. And then I said, you know, there's a wonderful devotee. This is in Delhi. So in the end, we went to see Gurudev. I took him to see Gurudev in his room. And Gurudev looked at me. He said, so are you ready to surrender already? Like Brajanath? No, I can see by your face. You're not ready. <laughs> the person I was with, he's like, what? What's that? Anyway, everything resolved. He went, he and his family went to Vrindavan and he got initiation. He, uh, he got initiation as Akilesh Prabhu. So Akilesh, he gave so much service to especially translating for Russian devotees. So Gurudev used to give these operations, make these operations. Uh, Madhavendra Puripad, 
I mentioned, he was performing bhajan here. And just like Rupa Goswami, later, I suppose, Rupa Goswami in, in Braj, Vrindavan. <coughs> he was performing his bhajan. And his practice was that he never begged. And he would just drink milk if somebody gave it to him. So a young boy came, said, hey, Baba, why are you fasting? No, nobody's allowed to fast here. So my mother sent him <coughs> some nice milk for you. So he tasted the milk. After the boy had gone, he tasted the milk. And he was in ecstasy. Couldn't concentrate on his bhajan at all. And he was waiting for the boy to come back. He didn't come. And then he dozed off like late on in the night. And in his dream, the same boy came and said, my name's Gopal. Oh, Srinathji. So he said, I've been hidden. The Pujaris, they hid me in the bushes now. I've been waiting for you to come. So uh, then um, Madhavendra Puripad, when he woke up, he realized, oh, that boy was Krishna. He's crying. And then gathered himself together and they found Gopalji. And we've already described, um, we already described the pastime there. How he established Gopalji on top of Govardhan and there was Ankut like this. So Madhavendra Puripad's Bhajan Kutir is there. Wonderful devotee, Madhavendra, mm, devotee, Vaishnava. He's the source of Braj Bhav in our line. Nobody before him had Braj Bhav in our line. Uh, and so moving around, we come to Puchari. So Puchari is, Govardhan can be compared to a cow or a peacock. So Puchari is, if we take the peacock, uh, similar. So Puchari is the raised, raised tail of the peacock. And here we've come, this is the, in this area, it's where the springtime Rasalila was performed, which we've already discussed with at uh, Chandrasarovra. And there's two beautiful lakes here, ponds, kunds. One is called Apsarakund, and the other one's called Naval, Navalkishore. So these ponds, therefore, Radhan Krishna, Krishna is Navalkishore, new, youthful, beautiful youth, and Apsara, comparing Shimadi Radhika somewhat inadequately with Apsaras because they're very beautiful and they sing and they dance, heavenly damsels. So Radhan Krishna were together here and they became in so much ecstasy that they, their forms dissolved and they became these Kunts. So Mm. We can take with, I mean, with great affection and love and affection and honor, we can take that water on our heads. And this is Radhan, these are the waters, Radhan Krishna, in their ecstatic meeting together, when they're in so much love with each other, they completely lose their form and they just dissolved in ecstasy. Mm. And then Moving on down, then we come to the actual, the, the place of the, um, of the Rasa dance, and there's Raghava Pandit's cave behind that. Uh, and then moving on from that, then we come to Surabhi Kund, and Pujipad Tridandi Maharaj is going to relate the pastimes there of Surabhi Kund. Srila Gurudev was always waiting for us with breakfast at Sarabhi Kund, and there were so many pastimes. One time he was eating puffed rice and some puffed rice dropped out and I managed to pick it up. And he said, oh, you should leave it for monkeys. I said, yeah, some monkeys got it already. So, Hare Krishna, Vanchakapa Dhrupa Shakri Vasana Nibhavita, Pujitanam Pava Nibhyo Vaishnavetyo Namo Namaha. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Um, so nice how the kata seamlessly led from one thing or another from from one pastime to the other so shadandi maharaj was talking about the feeding of 
COVID on and then it naturally goes to the the holding of COVID on. So thank you for telling me in such a sweet way. Thank you, Haribo. Daniel is going to ask his questions now. Marjorie, just a super quick question. That was so beautiful. Thank you again. I'm thanking you every day, both you and Tridandi Maharaj. Um, Indra's clouds, what were they called? Not Samantaka, they're called Samvartika. S A M V A R T A K A, Samvartika. Wonderful. You don't know the etymology of that, do you? I don't. Sam means gathered together. So they gather together ah, from nefarious, nefarious purpose. Yeah. You, if you read this beautiful description, there are all sorts of different Samvartika clouds in uh, Shiananda Brindavan oh. Champo's beautiful description. Kavi Kanapo, he really goes to town on that. Oh, is that where, because you're reading that amazing ceremony, is that in, an, in, is that in that book? That's, that's in Shiananda Brindavan Champo. Oh, thank you. Okay, I should perform my Chidandi Maharaj manifesting pastimes. Om Chidandi Sanyasai Namaha. I'll play the kalimba. I'll be right back like a genie. You get worked. Chidandi, 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 Chidandi. I think we summoned him. Chidandi Maharaj, actually, you know why Chidandi Maharaj is called Chidandi Maharaj? Because he had three dundas. <laughs> different places. So that's why he's called Chidandi Maharaj. I asked Shri Gurudev once, why is this called Chidandi, Chidan, when there's, there's four, actually there's five, there's four bamboos inside and then they, the jiva. And he explained, it was a very tricky explanation actually. It's like saying we talk about three Veda, but actually there's four Vedas and like that. So has his holiness appeared? Oh, yes, there he is. <laughs> Welcome back, your holiness. Thank you, sir. I haven't been away. I haven't <laughs> missed a breath. Hey, so, I'm disappearing. I'll leave it up to you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Don't leave us, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, so we're now on the last leg of our parikram, and we are going to Surabhi Kund and Jatipur. And I think yeah. the, um, the battle gate. I think we have one picture of Surabhi Kund, which I will shall I share now, Maharaj? Yes, yes, yes. A bit blurry, but yes, you can see we're all sitting on the banks there. This is actually where we would take our. Breakfast prasadam, which is always offered by the person who took on the responsibility of renovating this kund. Even while we were there, we used to come to this kund in 95, 96, 97, 98, and about close to 2000, this um, follower of Srila Gurudev got his blessings and decided to put all his resources into um, developing this kund from the stage. We see the photograph now. And then if we see it later on, it's really remarkable. What a magnificent job he did of um, renovating this kund and cleaning the waters, etc. So he did a very beautiful job. Gurudev was very, very satisfied with that service that he did. Okay, Tarunji. <clears throat> Jai Surabhi Kund Ki Jai. Jai Guru Garanga Ki Jai. So now we're continuing around from, we've, uh, Maharaj has just led us from Sankashan Kund to Govinda Kund to the, um, tail end, Puchari is the tail, as he mentioned, where these two beautiful kunds are, Apsara and Navalkund. And then we've come a little bit round the corner 
beginning, at the very, very beginning of our journey up towards the township of Govardhan. Then we have that Rasastali was on our right. And now we've gone a little further along and we've come to Surabi Kunj. So in Surabi Kund or Surabi Kunj, then as uh, Maharaj was just saying, that uh, as we walk along, Srila Gurudev would traditionally um, arrange for this um, follower of his disciple to um, host us for breakfast. And always we would have malpura dripping with ghee and uh, bananas, puff rice, and very, very, very spicy Brijbasi sabji. So, and then Srila Gurudev would sit for a while and explain to us the glories of that place. So, um, Pujapad Nemi Maharaj has described quite a bit of that pastime of Indra Dev, accompanied by all the um, denizens of heaven, all the demigods. There's an extensive description of all the different personalities who are performing very ostentatious um, worship of Krishna to the best of their ability. And Krishna, it's described, was just sitting on a rock, as Maharaj was describing, just holding some yogurt and rice in his left hand, and was not really phased at all by all this worship. And just down um, on the Parikrama path, all the suckers were suddenly wandering along looking for Krishna. So the suckers, they looked up at Giriraj, on the top of Giriraj, and they could see all these shining beings there. And they thought this was remarkable. And Madhu Mangal, who always proclaims himself the most knowledgeable Brahmin, told all the suckers, oh, these are the demigods. The demigods have come for some particular reason. We don't know exactly why they've come, but the demigods have actually appeared on the top of Govardhan. We should all go up and see what's happening up there. So all the suckers, they start to proceed up the pathway to where they've seen all these illuminating, dazzling lights of the demigods. And the demigods, meanwhile, they are aware that the suckers are approaching. So they don't want to disturb Krishna's pastimes. Indra doesn't want to disturb Krishna's pastimes more than he already has done. Indra has just tried to murder the entire residents of Braj. This was not a small time operation that he just went through, you know, pulling these uh, Sarma Vartaka clouds from the, they're tied with ropes of wind and they are the clouds of devastation. And Indra released those very clouds to devastate Braj in his anger, extreme anger of the village that wasn't offering their um, puja to him. So, and there's a beautiful description of the amounts of rain that they poured for seven days. There's many reasons, as Maharaj was explaining, uh, for this pastime is purifying Indra's pride, but also it's of absolutely cleansing any speck of contamination that may be in Braj. And this, this ocean of, of cleaning was like in preparation for the Ras Lila that was about to take place quite soon after this. So everything was swept, totally pristine, uh, shining, beautiful after the rains um, and the flood water disappeared. <clears throat> so when the cowherd boys, they're approaching the top of the hill where Krishna is sitting and the demigods are aware of them approaching, they become afraid and they jump behind the clouds. They know that they can't be seen directly by the uh, young suckers. So they hide behind the clouds and they're watching Krishna to see what happens. And when all the cowherd boys come up to the top of the mountain, they've dropped all their elaborate paraphernalia in their rush to quickly hide behind the clouds. And when the cowherd boys come, they find these huge, ornate, elaborate peacock fans and these amazing gold, jeweled um, chamaras. 
and these remarkable thousand holder um, uh, Giewick uh, lanterns to offer to. And, and they, they, they find all the, the, the beautiful golden bells and the, the beautiful conches and all the wonderful objects that the devas had presented to Krishna are all just lying around. So the young suckers, they pick up all these objects of puja and Krishna is still sitting on his seat. And now Krishna is smiling. And then the suckers, they begin imitating beautiful puja towards Krishna with all these beautiful objects. Like it takes like two or three of them to hold up um, a chamara. I mean, these are enormous, heavenly, very elaborate chamaras, etc. And four or five of them are holding these huge giwik lamps and offering to Krishna. And now Krishna is laughing. Now Krishna is smiling and he's laughing and he's looking so happy. And the devas behind the clouds are thinking, oh, what did we do wrong? Why was Krishna never smiling, even practically a glimmer of a smile while we offered all this puja? He was just looking rather bored, actually, when we were offering all of this. But now all the suckers they're offering with such joy and jubilance that Krishna becomes very, very happy and satisfied. So Indra and Surabhi, they, um, or rather Indra and all the devas, after they've begged forgiveness from Krishna, then Indra, he returns to Swagaloka. But Surabhi, she is so entranced by the beautiful atmosphere of Vrindavan and the beautiful darshan that she's had of Rajendranandan Shamsunda, that she wants to remain here and perform bhajan. So she stays here at this Surabhi Kund where we've come. This is directly on the opposite side of um, Govinda Kund. If we see on that aerial drone map, if it was panned right out, you would see Govinda Kund is on one side and on the other side, directly opposite it is Surabhi Kund. So actually today, Govardhan Hill is very narrow. Previously, in the time of Pulastya Rishi, it was 40 miles across and 64 miles long and described as being eight yojans high. This is how high it was initially back when Pulastya Rishi was carrying it through the airways from the father of Giriraj, who is Dronachal in the Himalaya. So we will hear this pastime later on. But now, of course, it's just quite a narrow slip. And you can see clearly these two kuns are adjacent to each other with Govardhan Hill in between. So Surabhi kund, Surabhi, um, the cow, is residing there today, meditating on the beautiful pastimes of Krishna. And sometime later, Indra was not feeling that he'd been forgiven sufficiently by Krishna because he, he just didn't feel he was still holding some remnant of that offense in his heart. The effect of that offense was still residing with him. So he requested Lord Brahma, what could he do to um, pacify this grief that he was still feeling? And Lord Brahma suggested that he come here to Navadweep. So here in Navadweep, um, he appeared again with Surabhi Kao again. Just down the road from where I'm staying here is another place called Surabhi Kunj. So that's an exact replica of this Surabhi Kund where we are today. And in that Surabhi Kund, Indra, he meditates again. And the Supreme Lord, Sachinandan Gorahari, manifests in a vision to him. And he becomes relieved of the apparats that he was carrying deeply within his heart, and he becomes satisfied. But even today, Surabhi is described as residing there as well. So Surabhi is in both places. It's described in Braj as well as Navadweep, because we understand that Vrindavan and Navadweep are non-different. Navadweep is Gupta Vrindavan. It's non-different. I think on this Prikama, it's wonderful to appreciate the um, harmony of these two dams, which geographically, of course, is a few thousand miles apart. But 
the actual um, tattva of these two dharms is the same. Navadvip dharma is the same as Vrindavan. So, but coming back to our place here in Braj, and we are glorifying Surabi cow here today for the um, beautiful service she performed in facilitating Indra to become forgiven by Krishna. But she does it twice. She also comes here to Navadvip and she also petitions Sachinandan Gorahari on behalf of Indra. So Mahaprabhu, he comes again, this Godrum, this Godrum, it means the, the, the cow and underneath the drum, this the drumada, the, the beautiful tree. So um, Surabi is, is residing here also. So in Surabi Kund, it's described that if one bathes in this Kund, then all his anartas, all his um, previous um, distracting thoughts from service to the Lord can be purified if one has the right intention. If we come here to Surabhikund with the right intention and the sincerity of heart to genuinely be forgiven for the amounts of time that we have turned our face away from Krishna to try to enjoy some flavor in this material world. If we are really petitioning Krishna to help us to do this because Srila Gurudev describes that whenever you're doing a Govardhan Parikrama, you should understand that Krishna is running behind anybody, anybody at all who is performing Govardhan Parikrama, wanting to actually give them his mercy. So we should appreciate that, that, that Krishna wants to bestow his mercy to that um, personality, that sadhak who takes the trouble to walk around Giriraj Govardhan. And we see over the year, year, throughout the year, the 12 months of the year, millions and millions and millions of people are circumambulating Giriraj Govardhan. There's never a time ever in the 24 hours of the day when there isn't some party or some group circumambulating Giriraj Govardhan because his mercy is so liberal. We know that when we do the Govardhan Parikrama, that the consciousness of any sadhak, regardless of what difficulty they may have been in previously, is immediately relieved. So this is the tangible mercy that we, all the sadhaks, experience from wandering around Govardhan. But particularly here at Surabhikund, we are remembering, of course, Indra and the pastime that um, our Nemi, Pujabad, Nemi Maharaj has just described when Indra is begging forgiveness for his horrendous crime, it really was, you know, so much envy that he had harbored. But it's interesting to note, I just want to add as a footnote here, that Indra Dave, he was begging forgiveness like this. And then a few years later, or even a few moments later, according for, from Indra's time frame, the demigods, they live for 306 years million years, uh, which is a lifespan of Manu. One lifespan of Manu is the same lifespan as the Devas. So Indra lives for that amount of time. So almost straight after this pastime, Krishna comes to um, Swaga and he wants a Parijat flower for Satyabhama and Indra refuses to give him. So you can make your own um, appreciation of the nature of the devas nishta, we can say, in worshipping the Supreme Lord. So this is described in Srimad Bhagavatam in a number of places, that we honor and we glorify all the devas, but we do understand their limited capacity, just like we describe the offerings of the um, bridge basis, Krishna is purifying that idea that Indra is the Lord who is going to supply the nourishing waters, etc. Krishna wants to establish that he is the Supreme Lord ultimately, or Lord Narayan, as far as the bridge basis are concerned, not the devas. So he's trying to 
put this firmly into the hearts of the bridge Bhasi. The bridge Bhasis already have Krishna as the center of their lives, but they worship Lord Narayan in their uh, uh, puja, etc. So here we are in Surabhikund. Now we're going to leave here. And there are also always many, many cows today when we come out on the dusty trail from Surabhikund, right in front of us between the Kund and Giriraj are so many beautiful, white, um, amazing, gentle cows. So we're going to walk along about two and a half kilometers and we come to the township of Jatipur. Jatipur, again, is completely on the other side of um, Govindakund. There's Govindakund, and if we have a triangle, we have Govindakund, Jatipur, and Surabhikund. The three are like that. So in Jat Jati means sannyasi. So this was the town where Madhavendra Puri resided before or during his meditation, uh, before he uh, brought Gopal Nataji out of the bushes. So he resided here. So this township is, is actually named after him, Jatipur. And when we come into the township of Jatipur, we can smell the rotten milk straight away as you're walking up the Parikrama path for about half a kilometer away because they are bathing continually with gallons and gallons and gallons of milk. This is like the mouth of Giriraj. This is the place where they are offering Giriraj all their offerings. On the other side from here is like Anayor. Anayor is just opposite also. So it's all very close together geographically. So um, the uh, general pilgrims who are circumambulating, they will always purchase the clay pots full of milk and offer to the beautiful mouth of Giriraj here. So when we walk past, the drains and gutters are filled with milk. And there are so many dogs there taking advantage of that milk. And there's so many monkeys as well. Monkeys everywhere. But it's a very joyful place. And usually when we come through this place, there are large groups of yatris from all over India. And they're all performing various puja and offerings and giving gallons and gallons of milk, not just little cups of milk, but making all kinds of offerings to the... And giving abhishek, constant abhishek is happening of these glistening black rocks we see there in the little compound as we come through. And it's always crowded and always white with being washed with milk. So this is happening almost continuously throughout the 12 months of the year. There's almost never a time where there's not some abhishek being performed there, as well as in the township of Govardhan itself, abhishek is going on continuously. So how much worship and puja and offering are being done of Giriraj Govardhan? It's described in the scripture that the influence of Kali Maharaj, the age of Kali, doesn't affect anyone in the vicinity of Giriraj. In the vicinity of Giriraj, Kali doesn't, hasn't manifested. And we see just out of interest that the township of Govardhan, where we're going to come to next, is so uninfluenced by these millions and millions of pilgrims coming through. It's still just a very, like a country town, we can say. You can't even practically, um, you know, purchase any um, uh, electronic device or anything like this. You have to go to the city of Mathura to do that. It's just milk sweet shops and puri shops, etc. It's very um, uh, rural in its mood and... Uh, atmosphere, which is very beautiful for Westerners coming from a material place. So now this is Jetipur, and we've witnessed the beautiful shining rocks with the Abhishek of milk. And then we're going to walk the next practically two, three kilometers, just on a very beautiful trail right beside Giriraj will be on our right hand side. And we'll walk all the way back to Govardhan from here. So this is the completion of, uh, of the big parikrama, we call it, the south end parikrama. So all the way around, 
from Dan Gatti, Dan Nebartan Kund, Anayor, Govinda Kund, uh, Sankarshan Kund, then Puchuri with Apsara Kund, Nabu Kund, the Rasastali, Surabi Kund, then Jatipo, now back to Govardhan. So this is our circumambulation, and we are filled with joy and happiness at being able to circumambulate like this. And it's a particular joy to be doing it on these virtual Zoom parikamas. It's amazing that we're able to actually, in consciousness, all of us collectively go to Govardhan and see some beautiful footage also, and just to be there consciously in Govardhan. Certainly, all the listeners who have ever been there and spent time there will be remembering clearly all of these exceptional, sweet pastimes of Krishna, the Sakas, the Gopis, Nanda Baba, the family, all the bridge Basis are all included in these pastimes of Govardhan. So, Giriraj Govardhan Ki Jai, Anantakota Vaishnava Rinda Ki Jai, Gold Premanandi, Hari Hari Bo. Jai. Thank you so much, Maharaj. As, as as you both speak, um, I'm remembering doing these parikrams, and I was remembering as well taking taking the puris with the spicy sabji, and my nose running slightly. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, I, I had a friend in London who was doing book distribution during a marathon, and he decided, it was like in the later days of the marathon, that he would do a Govardhan Prikama in his mind during that day of the book distribution. At the end of the day, he found in his money bag, there was a, two rupees. There were two coins of two rupees. So somehow or other, he connected. So it's possible in any condition to connect with Giriraj, wherever we are. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Yeah, this has been such a beautiful, wonderful day of Parikram. I'm, I'm sad that we're sort of coming to our closing time. We're but... tired, Tarun. It's a long journey, you know. Everyone's like wiped out. They get back to Giriraj Temple and they just lie down and rest for two or three hours now. It was quite a hike going around. Yes, <laughs> it was, but... But somehow my legs don't feel tired. <laughs> Actually, they do because I played football yesterday. <laughs> there you go. I can see uh, Chutananda Prabhu is raising his hands. So I'll ask him to unmute. We're going for him before we get to your show, those questions. Do you know how the, the Giddy Raj is uh, shrinking? Because even the Raghunath Das Goswami wanted to end his life by leaping. Uh, from a cliff in Govardhan, and now today you can see there's no place that's high enough that uh, jumping from anywhere would would cause your death. And also it's described that uh, Mahaprabhu was either at Mansarabar and he could see the peaks. You can't see them now anymore, even in 500 years. It's, it's going down. Do you, do you know the story of how that curse was put or is in separation well, that he's disappearing? That's one reason in separation. But we know that Pulasta Rishi, he um, requested that he carry Giriraj from his father, Dronachala, in the Himalaya. And Giriraj um, made a condition that if you put me down at any point, I won't get up again. I'll stay there. I'll remain wherever you set me down. Because Pulasta Rishi was seeing what an incredible... Um, atmosphere Giri Raj was able to exhibit with beautiful lush forests, etc., and trees. And he wanted to place this within his ashram. So, as he was carrying through the airwaves across Braj, Giri Raj became very excited on his uh, finger where he was being carried. And he put some weight onto Pulastya Rishi to such a degree where Pulastya Rishi had to. Um, go to the bathroom, basically. So he came down and he very carefully placed Giriraj and then he went and performed his ablutions and then he came back to raise Giriraj again. And Giriraj, because of the condition that he previously made, 
refused to get up anymore. So Palastya Rishi became infuriated and cursed Giriraj. Palastya Rishi is one of the sons of Lord Brahma, very powerful. So he cursed Giriraj to sink a mustard seed every day. And previously at that time, as I've described, Giriraj was eight yojans. So one yojan is seven miles. So what's seven, eight, 64, is it? More, something no, like 56. that? 56. 56. So 56 miles high. So that's how high it was originally, 64 miles long, 40 miles wide. So then placed in that. And then Giriraj has been sinking um, one mustard seed per day. There was a devotee. His name used to be, uh, was Dhruva Maharaj. He was a photographer in ISKCON, and he lived in Puri for a long time, made a beautiful book. But he calculated that he put five or six mustard seeds together and um, measured them. And then he was calculating how many years it would be before Giriraj actually disappears. And we see from Manasi Ganga up to Ratakund, you can't even practically see Giriraj, that there's nothing. You can see across, when you're in Udapkund now, you can look across and see uh, Kusum Sarobra on the other side, that there's nothing in between. So Giriraj is sinking in a mood of separation and also due to the curse of Pulastya Rishi. But and a, a, a more modern story, nice story. There was a, a devotee lady doing a parikrama of Govardhan, and she said, I'm, "I'm not qualified. I'm not going to take any stone. I'm not qualified." And then right in front of her was a giddy uh, stone, just about this big, and she said, "No, no, no. I I don't have anything to to put it in either to carry it home." And she said, "Something made me turn around." And I looked behind me, and there was a Ziploc plastic bag lying right there. And Govardhan is very well swept on the, not on the Rajasthan side, but he said so he turned around, and right there was a Ziploc plastic bag this big. And she said, This is a sign. So she took it. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. The devotees used to ask my Gurudev, could they take the Govardhan Shilas? And Gurudev, my Gurudev was never um, enthusiastic for them to do that because he wasn't sure of, or confident that they would honor Giriraj enough. My Gurudev demonstrated many times his great affection for um, Giriraj in all kinds of different ways. He would perform Abhishek every time he ever went to Govardhan in the 20 odd years I was there with him, he would always immediately get huge, like 10 kilo bags of sugar, you know, 20 kilos of milk, you know, five kilos of yogurt and have all the devotees immediately bring them to Mukharavinda, the, the beautiful face of Govardhan in Manasi Ganga and immediately worship there. We've actually got a picture somewhere of him doing that, but he would be very, very enthusiastic about performing the puja of Giriraj. And he performed bhajan of Giriraj. All the saints have at some point spent so much time in Giriraj. Raghunath in, Das, he's given. Yeah. In uh, Keshav Gaudiyamat, there is a huge. Uh, yes, Kovar. yes, yes, yes. Girirani, even with uh, plats. <laughs> Are there? So, Kapardana. Yes. Kapardana. Yes. very beautiful, very beautiful. Okay, Tarunji. Very bold. Um, we have a couple more questions. Someone wanted to ask this. This might not be this is related to something you said earlier, but it's not directly about Leela. So, if you don't want to answer it, that's fine. He said, does Krishna sometimes inspire a situation that seems like an offense in the heart of the sadhak to also purify their pride? You mean in the case of Indra? I think, yeah, I think that's maybe what was meant. Or maybe um, in the case of us. No, the, the sadhak always has a choice, just like Lord Brahma, even though Yoga Maya is making this arrangement for um, Lord Brahma to become illusioned about Krishna's mystic ability and thinking that he can compete with it. 
still Lord Brahma had essentially the choice. The jiva always has a choice. So Indra, you always have a choice of that. But it's almost as if the cards are stacked against you, so to speak. Mm. And um, it's very difficult. It's like the jivas in this condition, material state. Sometimes it appears that, you know, it's very difficult to avoid um, an attraction to the material energy. But nevertheless, we always, always have a choice to um, direct our consciousnesses to Krishna. So Indra could have taken different shelter and done like that. I, I'm not really sure on that. The, the, no, I think the question. that was... I think that was a very good answer. The person is is pleased with that answer. Okay. So I can see they're sending me messages saying thank you. Um, thank you, Maharaj. Um, and Jiva Parvan Prabhu has the question that you requested he saved for today. Okay, so just briefly, because time is short now. Um, he asked yesterday the color of Mother Yashoda in relationship to the pastime that Gurudev himself described about when Krishna um, was hearing from the cowherd boys that Mother Yashoda wasn't really his mother because look, she's of a fairer complexion and he's a darkish bluish color. So she's not really his mother. And in fact, Krishna, uh, Yashoda, she found him in a tree. That's where Krishna came from. This is what the young little two-year-old boys told Krishna in his ear. This is what little children will do, this kind of story. But I, So I asked Shamarani to please reconcile that because the painting on the front picked cover of the Damodarastikam is that Yashodamai is a bluish color. And Gurudev described that Yashodamai is a, of a lighter bluish color than Krishna. And if you look carefully on the front of that Damodarastikam book, you can see that's a fact that is somewhat of a slightly lighter hue, like the inside of a pearl. The inside of a pearl is, is a lightish blue than the um, outer edge. So, um, Gurudev, but Gurudev also describes, and this is the most important part of um, Jiva Pavana Prabhu's question, is that um, this particular pastime is not 100% authentic. This is what Shamarani told me yesterday. Even though Gurudev tells this story because it's such a beautiful story, but still the origin is not entirely authentic. It's not in, sh in Shastra, this pastime. It's one personality who is seeing this pastime in a trance-like condition, but it's not um, in the Puranas, this pastime of, of Krishna relating that um, he's not Mother Yashoda's son, in fact, because Mother... It's saying, though... She, Shamrani commented that in the nectar of devotion um, by our Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, that there it's mentioned that Mother Yashoda is of a bluish hue, the same as Krishna. So, and Gurudev uh, made Shamrani repaint that cover to make Mother Yashoda more bluish than was in the first edition. So is that clear? Do you have a problem? You have to unmute him. Oh, sorry. So I had, okay. I'll start on mute. Yes. Do you have a problem? Yes, Prabhuji. I actually was also uh, speculating a little bit as I thought about the question, because in this painting, um, Mother Yashoda looks most, most like Krishna. So I was thinking, well, um, is this to emphasize that she's the mother of Krishna, the way that Srila Gurudev liked to emphasize? And then I realized, well, the Leela, where she appears as golden, also emphasized. And I thought, well, Krishna also changes his color so for different, <laughs> at different times. So, you know, and, and Radharani as well. So maybe this is also, you know, um, part of Leela, but it makes sense that her original color would be Slightly fair, bluish, like, like, like a pearl, yes, yeah. light, lighter than Krishna's. So, yeah. yes. we can actually say that pastime because it's such an amusing pastime, but at the same time, we should know its authenticity is not confirmed in Shastra that particular pastime. So, Gurudev admitted this, even though he tells the story, 
mm. he did say that that wasn't oh. a confirmed pastime in Shastra. So that's, that, that was the principal part of her answer that um, But the emphasis to, is again to, 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 to um, verify or emphasize that Mother Yashoda is actually the mother of Krishna. Yes, and yes, she, yes. And is, she is actually bluish. She is actually bluish. She's not fair. This is, this is a fact. This is described that she is bluish. Rupa Goswami describes it that way too. Okay. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Hey, oh, the other, other thing I just want to mention, Ramananda mentioned as a joke, and I was thinking the same thing simultaneously, that maybe Govardhan is shrinking because of all the devotees that keep taking shivas. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> you know, th this is the this is the um, the power. That, 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 that Govardhan can, can never, Govardhan is always complete. doesn't matter how many Shilas get taken away. Govardhan is always absolutely complete. You, you can't take away from Govardhan. He, Gurudev has said, and I said at the very beginning of Akata, um, a couple of weeks ago, whatever, that there are always three um, Mahabhagavats residing in Vrindavan. This is Giriraj Govardhan, Tulsi Devi, and Jamuna Devi. If we take shelter of these three, then we can be guaranteed connection with that holy dham of Sri Vrindavan. So today, all of our guitar has been on the south end of Giriraj, and just he's been most prominent in our thoughts. And tomorrow we'll go to the center. We'll do a prikrama around Manasi Ganga of the Haridev, Brahmakund, um, Mukaravinda, and Chakaleshwara, Mahadev, and Sanatan Goswami's Bhajankutia all of those places tomorrow. And then the next day we'll go to Ratakun. So then we'll cover in these three days and we'll have a Govardhan Puja in between and we'll have a, a offering of the, the cows, Gokrita also. So there's five or six days that we devote in our parikrama to the glorification of Giriraj. The other thing I wanted to mention is that I've noticed in my discussions with devotees that have Govardhan Shilas, that most of them who have them and continue to worship didn't actually take the Shila themselves. The Shila came to, the, to them through someone else. Um, That's the best way, I, yes. And also, I remember when I was speaking with Shila Gurudev many, many years ago in, in, in Badger at the festival for Govardhan. And um, uh, he sort of corrected me because I, I, I had, you know, I was saying, you know, this is my Sheila and that's so and so Sheila. And he goes, no, that's my Sheila. And I was like, really? What? What? No, that's my Sheila. <laughs> he goes, no, Govardhan is my. <laughs> I realized what he was trying yeah. to make. You may have a little sense of Mamata, but at the end of the day, yeah. you should remember yeah. that you're yes. worshiping my Govardhan. <laughs> yes. Like, Very good. Very good. That's correct. That's the correct way. It's under Gurudev's guidance that we are worshiping Giriraj Govardhan. Yes. Very nice, Prabhu, indeed. Thank you. Hare Thank Hare. you, Prabhu. Taranji. Hari Bol. Thank you. So now we're coming to the end of the program. And I would like to <clears throat> especially thank Pujapad Tridandi Maharaj and Pujapad Nemi Maharaj for giving such beautiful, wonderful nectarian guitar today. Really, really nice for all of the devotees. We're having so many people tune into these programs just to give, just to give you a little hint. When when Trinandi Maharaj called me before we started these, he said, "I will be very happy if just ten people are coming every day to listen." So now we have, see on Zoom we maybe have fifty, but on YouTube on Facebook we have another twenty or so. So. 25 so often we're getting 70 75 people every day so it's so auspicious that we're able to all over the world this is one of the beauties of of Srila Gurudev Sangha as well that everyone's connecting together because we understand what's so even even if for example I don't have realization of the importance of Parakram we see it's it's so important to Srila Gurudev so so therefore we're coming and it's so beautiful so thank you so so much 
I thank you so much to uh, the organizers. And thank you to, yeah, there's so many organizers, especially you showed Anandam Prabhu and those who made the spreadsheets and um, Janard and Prabhu, who is finding, I think he's finding pictures, but he's definitely putting the videos together. And, and so many are putting in effort behind the scenes to make these programs run smoothly and be and be beautiful so thank you so much to them and thank you so much to the kirtaneers as well um so this evening if you want to hear more guitar on these places i'm sure you do at 6 p.m we will be returning 6 p.m uk time with shripad bhagavat maharaj and shripad vikanas maharaj and tomorrow morning we'll be back at the same time to Visit Sri Hari Dev Temple, Brahmakund, Chakleshwa Mahadev, Makaravinda, Sri Sanatan Goswami's Bhajan Kuti, and I think we're celebrating Yama Deepa Dan. Is that Diwali? Not, no, not fully. We're, we're offering lamps to Manasi Ganga tomorrow. But this, this offering of lamps will go on for three or four days. So it will begin tomorrow night. Yes. Mm, beautiful. Thank you. Very, yeah. So it's going to be another very beautiful, auspicious day. And now all we have left for today is Kirtan. So from Sriman Narahari Prabhu, I believe. So. I'm, Nirahari. Nirahari, sorry. I'm going to change the setting so that you can unmute yourself because I can't find you. Okay. Let's that. see the camera is right here. Haribo. Haribo. Guru Dev used to call me Narahari as a nickname. Narahari. Uh -huh. but my, um, my name is Nuri Hari. Um, Nuri Hari, yes. The name probably Nuri. gave me. Nuri, Nuri. Hari. Um, Okay, we're doing a, a new, kind of a new thing, so we have to see if, if the volume is okay with you, too high or not. I think the voices were slightly soft. Okay. Slightly. Okay. Okay. Hare, Hare Krishna. I turned it up a little bit. That's so uh, this is a song about Govardhan. And um, we um, had it in English. Then he put it in Spanish. And Madhava Maharaj wrote a Hindi version, but we don't have the words for that one. <laughs> oh, can they see you? Can you see can us you? both? Yeah. The camera's okay. a little far. Okay, okay. cool. Haridas Raja Ki In the land of Brindavan. 
so inspired hearing that thank you so much have you guys have you guys made an album yes we have, we have few where can is there somewhere where we can access it or is it just you know, we, we need some 
technical help. We actually only <laughs> yes, have actually. them on CDs, uh, except for yeah. some old albums of mine that were actually for children that are on band camp. But we do have CDs. We have um, Rock the After Live, which we won the Hawaii Music Awards for world music for, and we have Jaya. And we oh. have a, another one that we don't, we, yeah, we, we have another one that we haven't uh, finished. And then we have, yeah. But yeah, we, we get to upload to a, some yeah. good vehicle and maybe you two yeah. and that we have. Um, we've been pretty busy with uh, cows. And <laughs> that, would be, that would be so nice if there were somewhere like Spotify or maybe SoundCloud, even better. Oh, so, actually, yes, Jaya, Jaya, is, um, Jaya's on, um, on the internet, but I, it's like, I don't know how to get, get to it. It's like, once in a while, I get a thing, oh, you just sold an album or something, but it's done that, through, that. Um, no, it's um, band, band Zumba or something like that. I, I have to contact him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. That cool. Thank you so much. It was so beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Okay. Very cool. So now we are coming, we come to the end of the program. Bancha Kalpa, Tarubias Cha, Kripa Sindhu Bayeva Cha, Patita Nam Pavane Bio, Vaishnava Bio, Namo Namaha. Jai Vrindavan. Jai. Um, <laughs> Jai, Jai Haribol, 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 Haribol. Nanta Koti Vaishnava Vrindaki. Vrindaki Jai. Jai. Shri Hari Nam Sankirti Jai Jai Pranande 